Hello dear students we have already discussed about the first law of motion hope all of you understood what is first law of motion is it now let us discuss about another term that is momentum have you heard about momentum okay let's discuss about that if i have two balls with me one is heavier than the other one okay if both the balls are moving with same velocity velocity you have already heard we have already discussed what is velocity means if both the balls are moving with the same velocity and i need to stop both the balls okay so the force required to stop the heavier ball should be more is it i have to apply more force to stop the heavier ball than the lighter ball is it so momentum of the body is directly proportional to the mass of the body if the mass of the body is more then the momentum will be more okay so the momentum of the body is directly proportional to the mass of the body and if we consider two balls of same mass if i am having two cricket balls and what is the weight of the cricket ball it is 163 gram is it yes if i have two cricket balls with me and it is moving with different velocity when the batsman hits the ball it is moving with different pace is it different velocities and the force required to stop the fast moving ball is more than the force required to stop the slowly moving ball is it as you have seen in the ipl cricket match and all you know that okay so the quantity of motion or the momentum of the body is directly proportional to the velocity of the ball okay so what do you mean by momentum momentum depends on two things what are they the mass of an object and the velocity of an object and the momentum of an object is defined as the product of its mass and velocity hope you understood what you mean by momentum momentum is a vector quantity it is having both magnitude and direction and what about the direction of momentum the direction of the momentum is same as that of the velocity so momentum is how we measure the mass that is in motion as it is depending on velocity if the object is at rest whether it is having momentum no because it should be in motion okay the object must be in motion then only it is having the momentum so momentum is how we measure the mass that is in motion or we can say the quantity of motion possessed by a moving body is known as its momentum and how we can calculate momentum it is the product of mass and velocity so momentum depends on mass of the object and velocity and it is represented by p momentum is represented by letter p and mass is represented by m velocity is represented by v so we can say that p is equal to mv and what is the si unit of mass it is kilogram and velocity is a unit of velocity is meter per second or ms raised to minus 1 so what is the si unit of momentum it is kilogram meter per second or 
kg m s raised to minus 1. And we have already said that momentum is a vector quantity since velocity is a vector quantity. But the mass is a scalar quantity. Momentum has both magnitude and direction. You need a small bullet of less weight to kill a person. Is it? So the impact, impact produced by the small bullet is very high. Why? Because it is moving with a greater velocity. So a small bullet can penetrate into the body of a man and that kills. Is it? When fired from a gun because it is having larger momentum. Having larger velocity. Is it? A person gets severely injured when hit by a fast moving vehicle which is due to the momentum of the vehicle due to the large mass. If it is a fast moving vehicle and if it is having large mass then the momentum will be very high is it both mass is more and the velocity because it is coming with a greater speed its velocity is more so it hits severely is it that person will be injured severely okay next is change in momentum what is change in momentum what do you mean by change in velocity? It is the in final velocity minus initial velocity. We have already discussed, is it? Change in momentum is defined as the difference between final momentum and initial momentum. First, initial momentum, let us take it as mu. And we know that mass into velocity is momentum and initial velocity is u so we can say initial momentum is mu and final momentum let us take it as mv because final velocity is v and mass will be the same so mv is the final momentum so what will be the change in momentum change in momentum will be mv minus mu next is rate of change of momentum Rate of change of velocity is acceleration. And how you are getting acceleration? Change in velocity by time taken. Is it? Like that. We can calculate rate of change of momentum. How we can calculate? Change in momentum by time taken is the rate of change of momentum. Or we can say that the rate at which the momentum of an object is changing is the rate of change of momentum. And we have already said mv minus mu is the change in momentum so when we divide it with time we will be getting rate of change of momentum since mass is same we can take it out m into v minus u by t is rate of change of momentum understood and the force necessary to change the momentum of an object depends on the time rate at which the momentum is changed. Let us consider a situation in which a car with a dead battery is to be pushed along the straight road to give it a speed of 1 meter per second, which is sufficient to start its engine. If one or two persons give a sudden push, it hardly starts, is it? We know whenever the battery is dead and the car stops, what we will do, we will call some persons and we will be asking them to push it. And when uh, we will be calling some persons and we will be asking them to push it, is it? Yes. But sometimes it, it, it hardly starts. But a continuous push over some time results in a gradual acceleration of the car to the speed that is 1 meter per second okay it means that the change in momentum of the car is not only determined by the magnitude of the force 
but also by the time during which the force is exerted okay so force necessary to change the momentum of an object depends on the time rate at which the momentum is changed in the football the defensive player applies a force for a given amount of time to stop the momentum of the offensive player with the ball now let us discuss newton's second law of motion so it can be stated as like this the rate of change of momentum of an object is directly proportional to the applied and balanced force in the direction of force okay the rate of change of momentum of an object is directly proportional to the applied and balanced force in the direction of force it should be in the direction of force now let us derive the second law of motion mathematically as we have already said the initial momentum that is we can take it as p1 is mu and the final momentum we can take it as p2 is mv and the change in momentum is proportional to as we said in the second law of motion the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the applied and balanced force and we can see the change in momentum is m into v minus u that we have already said p2 minus p1 that is final momentum minus initial momentum and the final momentum is mv and the initial momentum is mu so we can write it as as mass is same so m into v minus u and the rate of change of momentum is m into v minus u by t and as per the second law of motion this rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the applied and balanced force so we can say f is proportional to the, the that is proportionality sign f is proportional to m into v minus u by t okay and if we want to change the proportionality sign we have to multiply the term with a constant so let that constant be k so we can say that we have changed the proportionality change to equal sign okay so we can say that f is equal to k, k into m into v minus u by t and earlier we have learned what is the and we have already learned we have already learned change in velocity by time is acceleration is it so v minus u by t is a is it so we can say f is equal to k m a where k is a constant of proportional where k is a constant of proportionality m is the mass of the object and a is the acceleration okay so f is equal to k m a suppose if one unit one newton force of one unit force is applied and m is one unit mass is equal to one unit and acceleration is equal to one unit then what will become k f is equal to k m a we have said and f is equal to one m is equal to one and a is equal to one then k is equal to one so we can get it as f is equal to m a understood f is equal to m a which is a very famous equation where m is the mass and a is the acceleration f is a applied and balanced force then what is the unit of force m is kilogram a unit of a is 
meter per second square. So we can say the unit of force is kilogram meter per second square or kg ms raised to minus 2. Or we can say this unit is also known as Newton, capital letter N, represented by capital letter N. Now let's coming to the applications of second law of motion. There are a lot of application for the second law of motion. A fielder pulls his hand backward while catching the cricket ball coming with a greater speed. To reduce the momentum of the ball with a little delay. Otherwise what will happen? If that momentum is not reduced that may hurt his hands. Okay, so while catching a cricket ball, the momentum of the ball is reduced to zero when it is stopped after coming in the hands of the fielder. Okay, if the ball is stopped suddenly, its momentum will be reduced to zero instantly. The rate of change of momentum is very quick and as a result, the player's hand may get injured. And you have seen it sometimes. Many times when the player catches it, catches the ball, he may get injured in his hands and all, is it? Therefore, by pulling the hands backward, a fielder gives more time to change the momentum to become zero. This prevents the hands of the fielder from hurting, from getting it hurted, okay? You can see it in this video. Okay. From the video itself you understood. How a player catches the ball. And how he controls the momentum. Another application is for athletes of long and high gym. Sand bed or Cushioned bed is provided to allow a delayed change of momentum to zero because of jumping of athlete. When an athlete falls on the ground after performing a high or long jump, the momentum because of the velocity and mass of the athlete is reduced to zero. If the momentum of an athlete will be reduced to zero instantly, what will happen? The force because of the momentum may hurt the player. By providing a cushion belt, the reduction of the momentum of the athlete to zero is delayed. This prevents the athlete from getting hurted. Okay? And there are a lot more applications for this Newton's second law of motion. As I have discussed, a cricket player lowers his hands while catching the ball. That we have discussed and we have seen it. Another uh, example. Our hands hurts more when we hit the wall. Than if we are hitting on the sponge seat of a car. Is it? Why? Because when we hit the wall with our hand. Then the hands comes to rest in small interval of time. Is it? Suddenly. Our hands come to rest. If we just hit it, then at that time itself, our hands comes to rest in a short interval of time. So, larger change in momentum of our hands takes place in small interval of time. This is what is called impulse that we will be discussing. Hence, large force is exerted on our hand. On the other hand, when we hit the sponge seat of a car, the seat yields and hand comes to rest after long interval of time. So the change in momentum of the hand takes place in larger interval of time when compared to when you hit on the wall. Hence, less force is exerted in our, on our hands. Hope you understood. And a karate player breaks a pile of tiles or bricks with a single blow. Have you seen it? 
What is happening over there? When a karate player strikes the pile of tile with his hands, he does so fast as possible and the movement is so fast. Have you seen it? That is, the time taken to strike the pile of tile is very small. As a result, the momentum of the hand of a karate player reduces to zero when his hand strikes the pile of the tile in a very small interval of time. Therefore, a large, very large force is exerted on the pile of tile. So, by doing this, the player will get enough force to break the pile of tiles. So, like this, so many examples are there. The boxer moves his head backward when his opponent blows a punch. Is it? Have you seen it? Boxing. So, all these are examples of second law of motion. Applications of second law of motion. Okay, hope you understood. Thank you.